everyone, welcome back to Apocalypse Here. Uh, for today's video, we're going to be doing something um, a little bit different. Um, we're going to be talking about Jesus and socialism. So I haven't really talked much about politics on this channel, so I figured it would be a good chance to, to do that. So on this Trinity Sunday, we're not going to talk about the Trinity. We're going to talk about uh, Karl Barth uh, socialism and all of that good stuff. We're going to kind of walk through an early essay by Karl Barth today that uh, was first published in uh, this book by George Hunsinger called Karl Barth in Radical Politics. This is the edition that came out in 1976 when he translated um, a speech that Barth gave. That's now an essay um, in this book called Jesus Christ and the Movement for Social Justice. The book's been recently reissued, uh, so there's a second edition now. I think it was back in 2018 is when that happened. There's a second edition now that uh, also includes some of Hunsinger's essays on um, Barth's uh, later work and the relationship between politics, especially socialism, and his later works. Uh, this speech that we're going to talk about today, um, that a young uh, pastor, Karl Barth, delivered to an audience of a Zoffenville Workers Association. Uh, this was well before he became known for his resistance of Nazism, um, before his work at, in his church dogmatics. It was before Barth's Christology really took on the sort of centrality that he really became known for. Um, at this point, Barth was essentially a theological liberal uh, because that's how he was trained. But it gives us really fascinating and early insight into how Barth understood the connection between theology and socialism. So let's go over uh, what Bart, who is known as the the Red Pastor, what Bart uh, has to say about Jesus and social justice. Bart makes clear straight away that he th what he thinks about this relationship between Jesus and socialism. He says, "quote The real contents of the person of Jesus can, in fact, be summed up by the words movement for social justice." Now, why would uh, Christians be worried about this? So this is what I'm saying, potential worries from both sides. So first, the sort of Christians, Bart calls bourgeois Christians. Um, they would be worried about sort of turning Jesus into a social democrat and would see this as inappropriate because we can't align Jesus with the political party. Jesus sort of is apolitical, transcends political parties. So we can't sort of tie him down to one. And along with this, Christians in Bart's day, and you find this happening often today as well, um, would point to the ways in which socialism has made mistakes. Individual people within the socialist movement have done bad things or something like that. But Bart is quick to point out that when, when he talks about Jesus and socialism, he's not talking about individual persons, but, quote, the subject matter itself, end quote. Pointing out how some individuals have acted as socialists is basically irrelevant for what Bart's doing. Bart is interested in what socialists want. What socialists want. Now, as for the worry of associating Jesus himself with socialism, Bart has a great answer. Um, to quote him, we don't want to make Jesus into a German, French, uh, or French social democrat. That would be absurd. But rather, we want to demonstrate the interconnection that exists between what is eternal, permanent, and general in modern social democracy, socialism, and the eternal word of God, which is which in Jesus became flesh, end quote. Now, on the other side, namely non-Christians, non-religious uh, people who are within socialism, their worry with the sort of association between Jesus and socialism is that it's kind of a Trojan horse operation for conservatism, and also that it's, it's for Christians who are trying to kind of surprise, convert people, I guess. <laughs> Um, Bart makes clear that the reason for his lecture, quote, has nothing to do with your attitude toward the church. The church is not Jesus, and Jesus is not the church, end quote. Bart isn't asking them to convert or to assent to some sets of beliefs when he talks about this connection. Um, he continues, quote, as an atheist, materialist, and Darwinist, one can be a genuine follower and disciple of Jesus. Interesting. Jesus is not the Christian worldview, and the Christian worldview is not Jesus. If I would like to interest you in Jesus today, then I can say to you gladly that I am not thinking of capturing you in order to, quote-unquote, bring you around to Christian ideas, 
end quote. Bart sort of setting his uh, motives on the table to kind of clear up some of these anxieties. Um, now, the subject matter itself, Jesus and socialism. Um, hopefully having helped ease his listeners' anxiety, Bart moves then to offer an outline of socialism and shows how both socialism and Jesus want a movement from below. Socialism is for the economically dependent, those who earn wages by working for someone else. So it's, it, it is about the poor, but it's also more generally about people who are material, materially dependent on a boss. Okay? What socialism wants, which is what Bart is concerned about in this speech, is, quote, to make independent those who are dependent, with all the consequences of their external moral and cultural life, which that would bring with it. And while Jesus was around well before uh, factory bosses and workers, uh, it's clear for Bart that Jesus shares a similar starting point to socialism. He was a worker who came from the lowest social class, who eventually, as Bart puts rather beautifully, quote, laid down his tools and began to move from place to place because he had something to say to people, end quote. And further, Jesus was sent to the poor, the lowly, which, of course, we see all over the Gospels. And Bart gives several examples. The good news of God's kingdom comes to the poor and lowly, with no consolation for the rich. Bart explains that Jesus is not about cheap pity um, from above to below or something like that. But, quote, the eruption of a volcano from below to above. It's not the poor who need pity, but the rich. Not the so-called godless, but the pious, end quote. But what is God's kingdom? What actually is it? Bart anticipates a negative reaction from Christians at this point, that socialism is about material and earthly flourishing, and that God's kingdom is about spiritual, heavenly, uh, and inward flourishing. Okay? Quote, Jesus and socialism are thus as different as night and day. End quote. But Bart takes issue with the dichotomies that this sets up between spirit and matter, inner and outer, heaven and earth, it basically suggests that uh, 800 years of church history has screwed this up by suggesting that Christianity is all about the soul and God. But when we look at Jesus, we see that the only two worlds that exist are not spirit and matter or heaven and earth, but the reality of God's kingdom and the forces of evil. Okay, So redemption is, quote, not the separation of spirit from matter, but rather that God's kingdom comes to us in matter on earth. The fruit of this kingdom on earth is, quote, nothing but social help in material terms, end quote. Spirit is involved, but it is a social spirit. Jesus, by word and deed, opposed material misery, which, quote, ought not be, end quote. And socialism, Bart sees, is in unity with Jesus here, because it too operates out of this deep conviction. Now... Uh, there's something that stands in the way of the arrival of a kingdom where the poor and oppressed are liberated. Socialists conceptualize this interference as capitalism, quote Bart, which is a system of production which makes the proletariat into the proletariat, i.e. into a dependent wage earner whose existence is constantly insecure, end quote. What's necessary for production within capitalism is really the private property of the boss. What socialism says is that it is unjust to pay workers so disadvantageously while the boss pockets the actual gain of the common production done by many others. If work is done collectively, which it is, then net profit should be shared collectively. That's what would be just. For this to happen, though, quote, the boundless competition between individual producers must fall, and the whole must itself become the producer and therefore the owner of the means of production. Now, even though capitalism is a modern phenomenon, the issue of private property kind of within this is quite ancient. So how does Jesus speak into this? Both the church and state for Bart are guilty of simply thinking about private property as somehow natural and basically live under the mantra of what's mine is mine and nothing can change that. And because they feel like this is a natural law, they get really upset, right? With socialists who come around and talk about the elimination of private property. But when we attend to Jesus and don't water down his words, we see that what's mine is mine, that sort of approach is emphatically condemned by him. Quote, Jesus is more socialist than the socialist, as Bart famously says in this piece. Jesus talks about the near impossibility of rich people entering the kingdom. Jesus talks about redistribution, which sends a rich young ruler away very sad. 
Rich person who tears down his barn to build larger ones to store his crops. Why wouldn't he? It's his property. Uh, God responds to you by saying, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? Bart sees that following Jesus and being faithful to him means, quote, we should make others into common owners. But Jesus goes even further than this. His mother and brothers called to him as a crowd was sitting around him. He no longer knew, as Bart says, any familial bonds that had some personal private value in themselves. And the same held for his disciples. So for Bart, Jesus's view of property conceived as private, what's mine is mine, is sinful because it is necessarily self-seeking. But beyond socialism, just saying that material situations need to improve and that, uh, you know, work must not be a way to increase private capital, it also has a way to get there. Organization. It proceeds from a solidarity among workers that is actually accidentally sort of already imposed on the workers by the capitalist system. Workers are always already in a condition of solidarity as workers. And to live into and organize around the solidarity means being a comrade in consumers' unions, in labor unions, and in political parties, end quote. Now, so many Christians in Bart's day and today operate under the mistaken assumption that Christianity is about making individual, cheerful, and where possible, materially blessed disciples. But Bart reminds us that when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're not saying, my father, we say, our father. Quote, for Jesus, there was only a social God, a God of solidarity. Therefore, there was also only a social religion, a religion of solidarity. End quote. Serving one another, joining together with one another in love and faithfulness is not a nice add-on to the gospel. It is inextricably bound to it, as seen in Jesus. For Bart, quote, one must become a communal person, a comrade, in order to be a person at all. Quote. Before going to the conclusion, Bart, Bart uh, kind of ends this section on organ organization and solidarity uh, really neatly and says, I find something of this power of God in social democracy's idea of organization. I also find it elsewhere, but here I find it more clearly and purely, and here I find it in a way in which it must be worked out in our time, end quote. So Bart concludes by clearing up some potential confusions. First, that he is saying that the socialists are right. Remember, Bart is only talking about what they want. And what they want, for Bard, is what Jesus wanted. As Bart famously says, real socialism is real Christianity in our time. There is a rebuke here um, that Bart is giving the socialists, that, is, that there is a, a, an important distinction between them and Jesus. Jesus has already acted in a way that the socialists want to, and Bart is urging them to act for what they want. Without hatred, without self-seekingness, that superficiality, all of that. But he encourages them saying, let the faithfulness and energy, the sense of community, the courage for sacrifice found in Jesus be effective among you in your whole life. Then you will be true socialists. So this is just the sort of brief walkthrough of Bart's 1911 uh, speech called Jesus Christ and the Movement for Social Justice. I'm probably gonna keep going through some of this book because it includes essays surrounding an important debate having to do with Bart and socialism, the significance of socialism for Bart throughout his life. And it's a topic that people who are introduced to Bart rarely, if ever, come into contact with. If you have any questions about this video, uh, please leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash apocalypse here, if you feel as though you're being called to support us in that way. And with that, this has been Apocalypse Here, Christianity you can live with. Oh, you know, Yeah, no, man, this is God.